Recessions are times of heightened uncertainty. When firms start disagreeing more about their future, when a lot of firms say it's going up and a lot of firms say they're going down, that is something where we kind of say this is probably times of heightened uncertainty of, of a riskier business environment. This is a new business cycle fact that the profession has established in the last couple of years. So the question is, what do we do with this? What can we learn about the way we think about the business cycle? One of the key questions in this research is, does uncertainty drive the business cycle or vice versa, does the business cycle actually cause uncertainty? A lot of economists have argued uncertainty was first and that basically causes economic activity to go down and therefore cause recessions. We actually find in our research that uncertainties might very well be more a result of the normal aggregate fluctuations and might be the result of a recession rather than its cause. The other thing that we really don't quite understand yet, I think, is what exactly is the mechanism through which uncertainty actually could influence economic activity. Is it because, for example, you have these, what economists call wait and see effects, that if people are more uncertain, they just stop doing anything because they don't know where they're going to be in the future? That's part of the quantitative work I've done, where you get relatively small effects uh, out of this. But then there's also other mechanisms why uncertainty might influence economic activity through the financial sector. I think that's how uncertainty could play a much stronger role uh, in explaining why, for example, investment activity falls and, or hiring falls. We need to better understand how macroeconomic phenomena influence different people, different firms, different households differently. Because you want to know who is hurt, for example, by a recession most, or who benefits most from trying to stabilize a recession. If you understand who is affected by certain macroeconomic events, um, we will also better understand why politicians behave in a certain way in reaction to certain macroeconomic events. Presumably, they will behave in such a way that benefits best their constituency. One of the new research projects I have is a project where we also use survey data which asks firms why they have invested at a particular point in time. Is it for technological reasons, because they want to satisfy demand, because they wanted to restructure, they wanted to just enhance their production capacity, trying to better understand what are the ultimate driving forces of aggregate investment fluctuations. And then we can also tease out a bit better what are the types of investment that firms are actually undertaking. There's no data so far whatsoever available on this, and we are trying to make some very tentative headway uh, into figuring out whether these different investment types behave differently over the business cycle. That project is still a bit in its infancy. I certainly can see students helping and working with me on these microdata. There's a lot of microdata out there still unexplored where students can make a big splash in the profession just by coming up with a clever new data set that nobody has looked at and exploiting it for interesting macroeconomic questions. And I would be excited to help them through this process. <laughs>